If you want to render a complex scene quickly, or you just don't have a great GPU, it's actually quite simple to optimize Blender's render settings, and I'm going to show you the best settings that I've learned after 2000 hours of experience with Blender. Alright, so looking at Blender's default settings, we have got a remaining time of 20 minutes, alright? So that is pretty huge for a single frame, like we haven't even bumped this up to optimize for fidelity, alright? So this is just like really, really bad. So this is our fast optimized render and is done in only one minute, which is just hugely faster. Obviously you won't notice this difference in all of your renders, but just because of how intense the scene is, we just notice a pretty huge difference, alright? You can spend two minutes going through and setting these settings up and optimizing and then saving this as your default blend file and this will save you many hours in the long run. So sit tight, hope you guys learn something new, hope you guys enjoy. Firstly, switch from CPU to GPU if you have not already, I'm sure that everyone here has. Alright, straight up, we can see that this scene is quite heavy. I am using an RTX 3060 and this scene is really chunking up in the viewport. So if we hide this volumetric, we'll see that everything suddenly becomes a lot faster but there is this very, very heavy volumetric which covers the entire scene and slows everything down a lot. Look at the lighting that we've got going on here, alright? That is very, very intense lighting. It's gonna involve a lot of calculations, so we are going to therefore need to optimize the scene a lot. Now the first tip, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard, is that you can use this noise threshold thing. This is one of the most important things for optimizing scene. If we make this number higher, it will have more tolerance for noise in the scene and thus it will render faster. You will notice diminishing returns and it will start to look pretty bad if you make the number too big. However, you can afford to go a lot larger than Blender's default and save yourself a lot of time. Max samples, we can take this down a fair bit as well, especially in the viewport, we don't really need to go up too high. Now this is a great tip. As you've seen, I've been able to kind of see what I'm doing quite well, even though it's a bit blurry, and that's because I'm using an inbuilt denoiser in Blender. I use open image denoise with the pre-filter fast and that allows me to see what I'm doing in the viewport quite quickly. Now in our render, I'd recommend around this, Blender's default is 0.01, but 0.1 usually works pretty well, but you've got to kind of do multiple test renders, um, and you just see how much it impacts it. As like a general rule of thumb, like you don't want this number to be too small, otherwise you're going to have time wasted rendering stuff that you're not even going to see. I'll show you an alternate method a little bit later on how to get a lot more visual fidelity out of your scene, without just cranking up your samples and light bounces to crazy numbers. Max samples we can have on something more like 256, that's what I had for this one but we can probably dial it down to even like 128 um, and Blender's default of 1024 is well, not really necessary a lot of the time and we can use this um, denoise option as well in your render if you're getting a lot of noise in your final render often I do um, and we want to be using an accurate pre-filter if we're using open image as well I'd highly recommend clicking this little clock icon beside the seed because this will mean you'll get a animated um, random noise texture and it will mean that you don't end up with something like this. If you look at this project, you can see that the render moves, but the noise is actually staying completely stationary, and it looks really, really weird. It's like the noise is just a texture which is overlaid over the entire video, and so if you change this, you'll get a result more like this. You can see this flickering noise is what you get when you turn that animated option on. Like, it is not ideal um, if you're just wanting a clean render, however, it's significantly better and significantly more acceptable. It doesn't look like proper film grain, but yeah, no, this animated noise is just far superior and you can actually overutilize it in this case where I've just set my samples like purposely low to get some budget film grain. Now light, light paths, alright? So by default, we've got our total set to 12. We do not need this, alright? I max out on three for all of my all of my renders. I have not gone above three light bounces for over a year and I have not needed to. I've tried them on 12 and there has literally been like no noticeable difference. And you can zoom into pixels and you can see that the light bounces are doing something, especially if you've got a lot of reflective surfaces or if you've got like a lot of refractive surfaces, then yeah, that can make a difference and you'll need to, again, just adjust to suit whatever art piece or render that you're working on. In most use cases, you just don't need that many light bounces. Three works fine and especially volume, this one really, really cranks up your render time. I'd recommend setting this to something like one. I usually only need one or even two the seaweed in the background, all of this stuff, this is all just on an image plane, and if I turn the transparency bounces too low, we can actually see the physical object of the plane, we can see the bounds of it, but if I set this back up to 3, gone. So yeah, you'll need to just play around with these. Caustics, this will absolutely destroy your render times, alright? Turn these off unless you actually need them, but Blender, honestly, from what I've heard, is not amazing for caustics, and you should use a plugin if you want really nice caustics. And so that's why I opt for using fake caustics, I would highly recommend that. So basically we can set our point light to use nodes, and then we can basically create 
our own gobo or little um, light texture. Instead of doing just a normal flat um, linear light around everything, we'll get something like this. We'll get this nice um, light pattern on the seafloor. You can see that we are getting this caustic like effect on the seafloor. And on our shark here, you can see this nice pattern. And this is all just coming from a single light that is sitting above and shining down. Um, Fast GI approximation, I would recommend putting this on in most cases. GI stands for global illumination and this is basically just going to try and speed that process up while cutting some corners. You can see the change that it makes, it generally makes scenes a little bit darker. In this particular render, I don't want it because um, it kind of messes with the nice haziness you get from volumes. Volumes, we're going to want our step rate to be set to 1, like just leave these on default unless you need like to render a tornado or something, you might want to set this lower for more fidelity. Now simplify is a really really good one, you want this on. And you can see your max subdivisions for your viewport. This is mainly for viewport optimization. I've set mine to half what my render is, so three. Child particles, you can set this also lower. I've got mine on half. Texture limit, this is a really cool thing. So if you go to Blender's preferences and then you go to the viewport option, there's this um, ability to set a texture limit size. And so you can change that independently in your render settings once you've turned that on. Performance threads, you want to make sure that you've got um, as many threads as your CPU has, but you're probably going to be using your GPU anyway, so it's fine. For memory, I would recommend using tiling and tile size at 2048 works quite well in general. The GPU works better with a larger tile size while the CPU works better with a smaller tile size just because of the way the different components can divvy up tasks. So if you're using your CPU, setting this to something like 16 or 32 might work well. This persistent data option can help if you're rendering an animation, but I've found that it doesn't work all that well for me. Now this right here, this is our secret source, alright? This is the resolution which we render at. This is very, very important for um, our fidelity of our render. Now this is a render I did a while ago for the Moving Meditations render challenge. This is a frame in 1080p, and this is a frame in 4K. You can see that these are on different frames, which is going to affect the lighting a little bit, but what you're mainly focusing on here is the fidelity, alright? If we go back to this 1080p one, we zoom in and we can see just like all kinds of like funny like blurring issues and just like it just looks low resolution. Whereas when we go 4K, we essentially just brute force more detail into the scene. Unlike path tracing where we're just simulating more light bounces, there's like four times more detail or so. Like we are having so many more pixels in the image, but this just looks so much better, alright? And you know what the amazing thing is? It doesn't actually hurt render speed very much. It's pretty linear with it. If you double your resolution, if you go up to from 1080p to 2K, you are going to approximately double your render times. It's a bit less than that, but you can use that as a rough estimate. I usually go for 2K myself, just so I can get out new test versions quite quickly. And yeah, it's still gonna significantly increase render times. However, if you tried to achieve the same look just with light bounces and upping like all of these other settings, you would take exponentially longer. You would take like three, three or four times longer and you wouldn't even look as good. So it's very much worth going through and just checking these and making sure that they are how you want them for your given scene. And just having some general blanket settings that you'll use as a default basis for your, your renders in the future. Because I always tweak these a little bit for every single render but most of these settings just stay the same. If you have any tips that I've missed out on or anything that I should look at trying out in my own render settings, then please feel free to let me know in the comments as well. I greatly appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I really hope that you got something out of this. And yeah, I'm working on the next video already, so look forward to hopefully seeing you in the next one. Subscribe for more stuff like this. Thanks so much again. It's been Yeeson. Goodbye.